All right, week five of the college football season, and we have got some great games on tap here this week. A battle of the SEC powerhouses coming up, battle of the Big 12 powerhouses coming up, and we have got you covered here on Wager Talks Bet on it, the college football edition, as we welcome in Kelly Stewart in the house. Kelly in Vegas here, as is Marco D'Angelo and Kelly. Uh, well, there's no better place to start this uh, this S show than with a battle of Big 12 powerhouses. Your K-State Wildcats going up against my Oklahoma State Cowboys. I wish one of these teams had won a game last week, but neither did, Cal. So here we are. Something's got to give Oklahoma State taking on K-State. What are we doing in this game? Yeah, that's why I'm trying to figure out why the hell you're calling them powerhouses. I mean, neither team offensively looked good last week, and it was actually really, really bad. Uh, This is a K-State team that, in hindsight, when I saw the line coming down towards BYU, I thought, you know, 1030 Eastern kick, it's late. K-State does traditionally well in those 11 a.m. Central games. Uh, That's why they called Martinez Mr. 9 a.m. there on the West Coast. Now we've got Avery Johnson, who by far has had his worst game, right? We, we only saw a few glimpses of him last season uh, in the Texas Tech game where he went off and rushed for like six touchdowns. And then the Pop-Tart Bowl against NC State. And then, you know, not, not a great win at Tulane. And K-State kind of struggled there, at least defensively. But offensively, they didn't shoot themselves in the foot. And so when I went to bed at 6 nothing with uh, two field goals kicked and a really snooze fest of a game there in Provo. I did not expect to wake up at 1 a.m. in a panic, but obviously my body knew the chaos that had ensued. Three turnovers, a pick six, a fumble by DJ Giddens. It, everything that could have went bad in a six-minute time period went bad for the Wildcats. On the flip side, admittedly, I did not watch much of Oklahoma State, Utah. I kept doing score watching and really – Oklahoma State didn't do anything offensively. Mike Gundy there cheering for Alan Bowman. I didn't understand that. But look, OSU, what do they do well? They do better on the road, it appears, than in Stillwater half the time. And they do better in the underdog role, more importantly. But I'm going to tell you this. Wildcats 14-6-1 and one off a loss under Coach Kleiman. And that's what the Wildcats do. I mentioned on that Friday night game versus Arizona. Keep in mind, Joel, Joel Klanderman, excuse me, the defensive coordinator for the Wildcats. What does he do best? He makes adjustments, whether it's in the second half or in the next game. I expect this defense to be much better, much improved once again, just in time to get their revenge over the last time the Wildcats quarterback threw multiple interceptions in the game, except his name was Will Howard. Last year, Friday night, Stillwater, Looks like a 31-21 type game, but man, would I be surprised to see it be similar to that Kansas State-Arizona game a couple of Friday nights ago? I wouldn't. K-State rebounds in a big way. All right, K-State rebounds. I, 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 that's just friendly. I might disagree a little bit on that, but we'll move on here. Uh, Marco D'Angelo, the game of week five here, uh, no doubt, uh, 7.30, I believe, on Saturday. A lot of eyes going to be on the SEC as Georgia heads to Alabama. We don't often see Bama as a dog, but guess what? Bama at home and a dog, but Nick Saban ain't walking through that door anytime soon here, Marco. So what are you thinking in this one? Well, Joe, that's the whole thing. You know, knee-jerk reaction right away. You see Alabama as a home dog, and you're going to want to run to look at that one. But uh, tap the brakes for a minute. I'm not going to do it because, you know, we talk about how many times I tell you revenge is the most overused term in sports betting. But there is one example that I love to look at revenge, and that's, you know, when somebody ends your season. Now, technically – They didn't end their season. But what happened last year when Alabama beat Georgia in the SEC championship game, it ended Georgia's attempt for the three-peat. And I still think they should have been in last year uh, to have the chance for the three-peat with the season that they had. This has been the best team in college football for the last three years. And they've had this game circled. No question about it. 
and they're going to show up. And I, if you look at their last game, I think that gives us a little bit of line value here because they barely got by Kentucky 13-12. to 12. You want to talk about looking past somebody, even though the game wasn't for two weeks after the Kentucky game, they went into that Kentucky game off of back-to-back blowouts, 34-3, to 48-3 against teams. Clemson, who's playing well since that game, and then Tennessee Tech, you know, no big deal. But it was what Kentucky was coming into off of their game. Kentucky had gotten blown out by South Carolina the week before. I think Georgia was looking ahead to this Alabama game, and it almost cost them. You'll see the real Georgia here. You'll see that defense. Yeah, Alabama's been rolling, and as Joe said, Nick Saban's not going to be on the sidelines. This is going to be first major test for the new head coach. It's always tough following a legend. But, man, if you could knock off Georgia on Saturday, you might just find yourself being an instant hero there in Alabama. But I'm not going to do it. Uh, Kalen DeBoer is going to have problems here. The only advantage he has to me in this game that was an advantage for Kirby Smart is Kirby Smart kind of knew some of the tendencies of Nick Saban. Obviously, he served on his staff. He's not going to have that luxury here but I'm still going to go with what I feel is the better defense. Alabama's offense has looked potent all year, but let's be honest, Western Kentucky and South Florida don't have great defenses in Wisconsin. Well, you know, welcome to playing a big or playing an SEC school that can play smash mouth football like you. They got smashed right in the mouth. I'll go ahead and take Georgia on Saturday. Georgia's had this circled all summer long. They get their revenge on Saturday. No roll tie. It'll be the Georgia Bulldogs that get the W. Kirby Smart, tough guy to go against in that kind of situation there. All right, we got one other revenge-minded team going to do battle at home here this weekend, and that is going to be Notre Dame taking on Louisville. Now, you may recall last year, uh, Louisville – Uh, ended up embarrassing as a six-point dog winning outright Notre Dame as they took apart Sam Hartman. I think they got him to turn the ball over four times in that game. Not good. So what happens when you pluck a ACC quarterback out of a middling school? Yeah, well, that's what happens, Notre Dame. So what'd they do this year? Well, they went and plucked out another quarterback from a middling ACC school named Riley Leonard. And... Just for the record, uh, Duke ended up losing to Louisville last year with Riley Leonard as their quarterback, 23-0. So what do those two things have in common with this game? Absolutely nothing. Uh, You've got a Notre Dame team that is going to be, I'm talking, pumped for this game. Here's the problem that I have. I've got two top 15 defenses, and both these defenses are really, really good. Tyler Shaw has been fantastic uh, for Jeff Brom, head coach of Louisville. Kid has been really good. Eight touchdowns, no picks. Uh, But my goodness, this defense is a different animal uh, that he's going to be facing here in Notre Dame. And the other thing that you love about Notre Dame, which Louisville's going to have a problem, is they can't run the ball. Louisville cannot run the ball. That means... Uh, they're going to drop back here an awful lot against this de- uh, this defense, and I think that is a recipe for disaster. That Georgia Tech game should have been much closer than what the final score was as Georgia Tech pretty much outgained them and outplayed them except for a touchdown off a field blocked field goal, and I think they recovered another uh, fumble in the end zone earlier in the game was not a great showing by Louisville. If you can only get yourself 34 and 130 yards on the ground against Austin P and Jacksonville State, you are not beating Notre Dame in this one here. The number is just under a touchdown, and I would absolutely lay it with Notre Dame this Saturday as, yes, there's a few teams that have revenge on their mind. I'll tell you what we have on our mind right now a little gold because it is that time of the day here vr gianni the greek let's get some gold here for this week number five in the college football season all right we have a lot more totals than sides 
But let me dive right in, start off with Friday Night Football. Washington plus three. Move on to Saturday. I'll get the sides out of the way first. Georgia State minus two, two and a half. And the money line, that's why you're looking at three right now. Key number. Also, 122 Central Michigan minus the three. Flip the page. Go to South Florida plus six and a half. That's game 157. Game 185, Fresno State plus three. Game 206, Michigan State plus 24 and a half. And can't leave out Alabama over Georgia at two and a half and the money line. Now a couple totals for you. Start off Liberty over 62. Stanford Clemson over 57 and a half. Buffalo Connecticut over 43 and a half. UMass Miami under 47. Oklahoma State, Kansas State over 55 and a half. Let's go under 50 and a half. Arizona, Utah over 61 and a half. Mississippi State, Texas under 47. Louisville, Notre Dame. And finally, Air Force, Wyoming, 34 and a half. Nope, still under. That's going to do it pretty much for the totals and sides so far that I've been able to narrow down as legit steam. That's what we got. There you go, VR. Week five, can you believe it? My goodness. Uh, we are uh, already at the, almost at the halfway point here. We, uh, of course, will see you again on this weekend's edition of Last Call. All the last-minute steam and gold that you could possibly need. Mark your calendars. Make sure you join us Saturday and Sunday here on wagertalk.com. All right, so let's focus on the double-digit dog, uh, Triple D, this week here, Cal. A lot of interesting spots, I think, that you could have gone uh, this week for a double-digit dog. Which one did you end up settling on? Yeah, I looked at Arizona as well. Uh, what else was a double-digit dog that I had on my long list? Kentucky, mm. who just couldn't couldn't get it done. And then I, now I think Illinois might be a little square, but we'll get into that one later on. So I did take Western Kentucky here, 12 and a half. Some 13s popping up on the Wager Talk odd screen. So keep an eye out there. But I know everybody's going to say, oh, Kelly, you're picking on Boston College. And that's actually... Not my intention, but after losing Spartans money line last week, I kind of went back and looked at that game. And I was like, what am I missing here? And I realized it's Bill O'Brien is afraid to throw the ball downfield. And maybe that's because the Spartans defense is as good as advertised. But you know who's not afraid to throw the ball downfield? Tyson Helton. And he is very well known for doing so, averaging 26 and a half points per game for his team, almost 4,000 yards and off of offense. And that's after they put up a nothing burger to Alabama. I think Devontae Adams in that secondary is going to absolutely pick off Castellanos at least once in this game. Plus, the Hilltoppers, guess what? They're headed into a bye after this game. BC, not an ATS powerhouse at home. We've seen it before. The team sometimes thrive in the underdog role, do not do as well in the double-digit favorite role, and that is the Golden Eagles. So I'm taking the Hilltoppers plus 12 and a half in this one. All right, Western Kentucky, it is uh, lines up pretty good for them in this week in that spot for sure. And Marco, well, the deli is uh, certainly open, and uh, I'm sensing a theme with you. Spending a lot of time in the SEC this weekend, aren't you here, my man? Uh, talk to me about the sandwich spot between these two SEC teams. Well, I'm just going to go to uh, Kelly's Nothing Burger. Is that like one of those meatless hamburgers? Because oh. you will never find that oh. in my deli at all, okay? That's mm. not happening. But we are going to go with a sandwich game. <laughs> that honestly, guys, could have been the trap game as well. It fits both ways. So you know what? Hey, we're going to just roll with it. And that is going to be – we're taking Auburn plus the points against Oklahoma. How many people are going to automatically look to Oklahoma, bounce back after that tough Tennessee game last week? You know, all I got to do is beat Auburn. The same Auburn team that lost to Arkansas last week. No problem there, right? Well, guys, look at the schedule. You want to talk about a sandwich? This is the sandwich of all sandwiches. That game last week against Tennessee was huge. It was the first SEC game at home for Oklahoma. You had all the TV cameras there. It was a night game, all of the hoopla. And then throw a little more in. Who's the coach of Oklahoma? Yeah, one of your former standout players, Josh Heupel. All the, you couldn't have more drama there. And it was a hard-fought game. Tennessee comes away with it. 25 to 15. So, you know, they didn't get embarrassed, but we used the phrase last week. I'll throw it out there again. 
How about losing the same game twice? That was a big game for Oklahoma. That's where the trap part of it comes in. Now let's look at the sandwich part. You played Tennessee, a team that's ranked fifth in the country last week. Who do you got next week? Oh, you got your old buddy that you brought with you from the Big 12 to come over to the SEC. That Red River rivalry, we can't call it the shootout anymore, sorry, but I still do. Uh, That's next week. No, I'm not buying it. I am going to go with Auburn. And yeah, Auburn lost last week to Arkansas. Do you think they were looking ahead to Oklahoma coming to town this week? That's why we liked Arkansas last week. It's probably why everybody else liked Arkansas and scared the the heck out of me as being one of those popular dogs last week, Arkansas. But they still got the money uh, getting the job done. Auburn bounces back this week. And how can you have this Oklahoma team This offense, when you think Oklahoma, we always think about them scoring a ton of points. They have yet to throw for 200 yards this year. Think about that. Now we're a couple years removed from head coach Lincoln Riley leaving. A lot of times you don't see the drop off the first year uh, because you're still playing with the other coaches' uh, prospects. Now he's on his own. Job's not getting done, in my opinion. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take Auburn. Welcome to the SEC, Oklahoma, you're going to get another loss. Give me Auburn as the a little tiny dog. So I hear Kelly chirping and, you know, giggling in the background. I got a chihuahua here, but you know what? I don't care. I want a winner. Give me Auburn. Does that count, Kelly? No, can we, can we let I mean, him get just a win? Just the winner. Uh, it's literally just beat the winner. Just take Auburn money line. Why are we even saying plus two? Just say plus 125 or whatever it is, Marco. I don't have the wager talk odd screen open. Yes, Auburn at home getting it done there for marco and now i'm hungry it is a sandwich spot but i will eat as soon as i fade joe public and uh, boy oh boy uh we went with rutgers last week fading joe public uh they all loved west virginia thought that was a great i mean they all uh they all wanted uh rutgers to lose that uh game but they did not and i'm seeing the same thing right now in the market as I've got a ranked team versus an unranked team. We have a neutral site game, by the way. This game between Arkansas and Texas A&M is going to be a Jerry's World there. It's at AT AT&T Stadium. And I don't know what it is. Marco referenced it. Arkansas last week, a dog against Auburn. Now they are a dog here. This one opened up at six. Uh, They were getting six. It's now down to four. Uh, but it ain't the public uh, that's running the window to get Arkansas. A&M, by the way, 11-1 straight up in this series. Uh, they won in last year, 234-22. In fact, when Jimbo was there, he pretty much owned Arkansas each and every year. But did anybody catch that A&M Bowling Green game last week where they were, by the skin of their teeth, lucky to be able to have gotten out of that? Uh, yeah, Connor Wegman must be, and they say he could return from his injury this week, but is there any more overrated quarterback uh, in the SEC than Connor Wegman? I don't trust this Texas A&M team as far as I can throw them. You've got a ranked team versus an unranked team, but your unranked team, by the way, can drop points on everybody. Arkansas has certainly shown an ability to score and score again. Taylor Green, the former Boise State quarterback, I think he's going to have a ton of success against this A&M defense. I do not trust the offense of Texas A&M to get anything done. I will take your four points here, and I will fade Joe Public, who sees a ranked versus unranked game and goes, yep, give me Texas A&M. Nuh-uh. Give me Arkansas. I'll take the four points there. And speaking of taking, giving, laying, or uh, putting up points, uh, there is nobody better to check in with especially after the week he had last week in college football the pen mr ralph michaels in the house and uh ralph we were here exactly one week ago uh not only on the uh, college football edition of bet on it but on the nfl edition uh two and oh on your tna uh plays that you pointed out to us not to mention a six and oh college football weekend you absolutely crushed it uh and there's no doubt you're following it up with a few more winners here but talk to me about this week's tna play which i believe is going to focus 
on a total this week? It is. And Joe, thank you for mentioning the 2-0 and run. Kentucky and Green Bay last week covered by 35 Ooh. points. I'm going to one of the lowest totals on the board. I'm going to Kelly and Joe World into the Big 12, Oof. looking at Iowa and Houston under 43. Yes, it's a very low total for college football, but, you know, I guess Iowa State is in that same state as the other Iowa team that happens to go under all the time. And you look at low totals in college football, since 2013, if you blindly bet every total of 45 or less under the total, you have cashed 55%. Well, that's not a wow number. It's certainly a number you should be aware of to make sure you're not afraid to use those low totals. We have two teams that are snail's pace. They are number 105 and number 113 in offensive plays per game. So this, uh, the play clock will be winding down each and every snap during this game. You look at Houston, no team has been as inept as Houston offensively. Seven points against UNLV, 12 points against Oklahoma, zero points against Rice. They did have 33 uh, in that win against Rice at home. Excuse me, the zero point was at Cincinnati last week. But when I look at explosive plays, and I want to make sure a team does not have a lot of explosive plays on offense and does not give up a lot on D, these teams are actually tied. They are number three on offensive explosive plays, that's plays 20 yards or more. And on defense, they are both top 10, allowing the fewest explosive plays in college football of 20 or more. When we look at Iowa State, as I said, they are an under team. If you exclude games when they were a big dog of seven and a half or more, they are 44 and 89. Folks, that is 67% to the under, just blindly betting Iowa State games, excluding games as a big dog. When you look at Iowa State with low totals of 45 or less, they are actually 69.2% to the under. And let's see, Willie Fritz, the new coach is Houston. Yes, they've struggled. Yes, they have not found their, uh, their path. YPA of 6.4 for Donovan Smith. But how about this? Willie Fritz is an under coach, 55% in his career to the under. But Willie Fritz is 1-14 over under his last 15 games. More importantly, those games have gone under by over 10 points per game. Willie Fritz and Iowa State, give me the under. One last system play. Teams off a loss by 28 more that trailed by at least 28 or more in the third quarter. So they did not have a big fourth quarter push. They basically were even or got outscored in the fourth quarter. Those teams are 56.3% to the under with over 530 games of sample size. But if that team is a conference home dog with a total of 62 or less, those teams, like Houston, have gone under 78%. It is a low total, but give me under 43, Iowa State and Houston. There we go, Ralph Michaels. No doubt we are going to make this another undefeated week uh, with your TNA play. We certainly appreciate it, Ralph. We'll see you in the NFL edition of Bet On It coming up. But now it's time for Best Bets. Let's start here with uh, Kelly, your best bet uh, this week. Boy, this, this line's moved a little bit from the open, but have no fear. Still plenty of value uh, with this team. Tell us about Northern Illinois and why we should be backing them. Yeah, there's value because I think they went out right, Joe. I mean, look, I hate to give out a team that was a touchdown underdog, and then now by the time we filmed the show, the yeah. line's moved a point and a half, two points. But I like this team in the underdog role, and that's where they actually thrive. If you watch that loss to Buffalo last week, not only was it really ugly, but they actually led in that game. They were up 14-3 to in the second quarter. Man, they had more, almost 200 more yards in against this Buffalo team and still somehow managed to lose the game. Those are not spots where you want to back the Huskies, though. You want to back them as an underdog. 
Just like NC State. I don't want to back them at all because they have not shown me a single thing. Let's see, they barely beat Western Carolina. Louisiana Tech, they get to get by, and then they get blown out by Tennessee on a neutral, and then last week to Clemson. Defense plus the points, or the better defense plus the points. You guys hear me say it. I sound like a broken record. But if you remember, NIU, same defense held Notre Dame to under 300 yards. And in fact, this Huskies defense has yet to give up 300 yards in a game. Head coach Sean McCammick, 15-5 and five as a way dog. Like I said, catching more than a touchdown here, I can't resist. But you guys got to remember to sprinkle a little bit on that money line. All right, Cal, good stuff there. Northern Illinois, uh, plus five and a half. A little, in the, uh, you guys know what you're doing there. Uh, speaking of this, if you like uh, money, uh, Marco, there is a great opportunity right now at Wager Talk to hop on board and get an extra 30 days. That would be 120 days and no better time to partner up than right now because we got a lot of things coming up. Hockey, the NHL already in preseason, college football, NFL, World Series, NBA, college hoops. Buy 90, get 30 days for free. That sounds like an incredible opportunity here, Marco, to partner up with you. Absolutely. And that's site wide. You can get that for any capper at Wager Talk. And it includes all of the 5% plays as well. Mm. Go, you know those 5% plays sell for $35 each. So it's a great time to do it in. Uh, speaking of those 5% plays, thank you to everybody that joined me last Sunday uh, for my 5% uh, big winner with the Detroit Lions. And we're now 10-2 and two on those plays. We're looking to card over. We've got a couple candidates that may end up being a 5% play. I've got one we're looking at in college football on Saturday as well. We haven't had one in college yet this season. So stay tuned for it later in the week. Uh, check out my homepage for more updates. Joe, we've got a best bet for you here that some people might look at this one and scratch their head when they see the line and say, what's going on here? And I'm going to say, you're going to find out what's going on here. We've got Washington State traveling to Boise State. Now, you look at Washington State, 4-0. Uh, they're putting up a ton of points. This is the team that has been playing with a chip on their shoulder all year. Why not? Um, they're like... Uh, the child in uh, Home Alone, they got left Home Alone as an orphan, them in Oregon State from the Pac-12, and they've been taking it out on everybody. And two weeks ago, they got their big revenge game whenever they played their rival, Washington, you know, their big brother that left them at home. Uh, they got their revenge in that game. And I thought last week would be a spot for them to have a letdown. They kind of did. Uh, they escaped with a two-point victory but they put up 54 points, 54-52. They didn't cover the double-digit number of 13. Now they're on the road getting seven and a half. How is a team that's undefeated getting over a touchdown from a team that's just two and one? And the only team that they played that anybody you know knows has any strength was the team they lost to. Well, that team they lost to was Oregon, and they only lost by three. And I'm talking about Boise State. Boise State's this big of a favorite for a reason. Washington State's been able to manhandle their opponents. Uh, and what I mean by that is they do play a physical style of football. They're going to run the football down your throat, which will set up their passing game. That's not going to happen here because they're going to face another power team in Boise State. Boise State can run the football, and it also sets up their passing game. Boise State, 371. 221, 342 in their three games on the ground. And granted, yes, two of the opponents were soft, but they did run for over 200 yards against a good Oregon team. I think they dominate this game and wear Washington State down and give Washington State a taste of their own medicine. And yes, Washington State has had something to prove the last few weeks with some of their games. But guess what? Boise State's got something to prove. They said, hey, you invited us to come join you in the Pac-12. Guess what? Be careful what you ask for. They're going to get a beat down in Boise. I'm laying it with Boise State. I've got them winning this one 41-24. to Washington State's given up some points this year. They're going to get wore down in this one. Give me Boise State. Oh, Boise State getting it done here for Marco as a best bet. 
All right, for my best bet this week, I don't have patience to wait until Saturday because I like this game on Friday. And uh, we listen, we gave you last week, I was all over Rutgers against Virginia Tech on the road as a dog. They ended up winning outright. Now, all of a sudden, the whole world seems to love Rutgers and thinks, wow, now this is a team. Way to go, Shiano. Congratulations. But now you've got a Washington team come into town and far too much being made about, oh, they got to travel all the way from Washington to, it's Piscataway, New Jersey, all right? It's kind of like hell in a handbag, and I get that. But Washington, this has got to be, and a lot of people haven't spent any time focusing on Washington, but this is a team that is really a late field goal away from being undefeated. That late field goal was in the Washington State game uh, in the Apple Cup. They should have won that game but now they get to take on a scarlet knights team that did a really good job against va tech uh they are solid defensively and we know that but we have got ourselves a washington defense right now a legit defense we're talking about a defense giving up 10 points a game here this is legit not to mention will rogers former uh mississippi state quarterback has been unbelievable for him, has not turned the ball over. He's been playing out of his mind here. Vatek got after the quarterback on Rutgers last week. I think they ended up getting three sacks. They've run the ball and they haven't turned it over. I think that changes against this defense here. The bottom line to me is I like Washington. I'll take the three and you better hurry up because I see this probably going down to two and a half, maybe even two by the time kickoff gets here but i like him to win outright as well this is going to be one of those kinds of games you got to look at the under but you gotta like washington's chances to go to rutgers and handle their business here against a rutgers team that might be feeling it a little bit uh and maybe a little bit of a letdown as uh, they went on the road to beat virginia tech last week i think they give one back here it's washington as a best bet for me Sprinkle a little something on that money line and take that field goal. All right. I think that will do it here. We've got best bets. We've got uh, a sandwich. We've got double-digit dogs. We're fading Joe Public. We've got gold. We've got Ralph and his TNA, which, again, undefeated now since last week. So great opportunity for you guys to make it a very profitable week number five here in college football. Also, another way to be very profitable is by joining us each Saturday and Sunday for last call here on Wager Talk TV. We are 11 a.m. Eastern time on Saturday, noon on uh, on Sunday, just an hour before kickoff, both college football and NFL. Last minute line moves, steam live from the risk room. Great opportunity and great information for you guys to get all those last minute questions you may have answered. So the easiest way to get reminded is by giving us that thumbs up, hit that bell in the upper right-hand corner. And if it's individual games you're looking for, just go ahead and click on the video on your screen now as you'll get access to all the big game previews and best bets that we have here at Wager Talk. Until next week, guys, best of luck with your plays and bet on it.